Hi everyone, it's Lisa Mears. Thank you for joining me. In my video today, I'm going to be making five Christmas cards using some of the brand new Christmas stamps, dies, and stencils from scrapbook.com. Before I get started with this video, I do want to let you know that I will have a complete list of products that I use in all of my cards down in the description box of this YouTube video and on my blog at lisamearsdesigns.com. So let's get started with card one. This is the scrapbook.com Christmas trees stamp set. It is a large six by eight stamp set and it has two Christmas tree stamps that you can layer. So you have the solid that's shown in the black stamp and then you have the layer that's there on the right that has the outline. So you can stamp one in a lighter color and one in a darker color to get a two-toned color effect on your Christmas tree. There's also some other stamps that you can use to decorate your tree so you can make it have a face. There's also some legs, a purse, some hands, there's also some bows. And I'm going to start out by showing you how to layer the Christmas tree stamp. So I have the solid stamp and I'm going to ink that up with the scrapbook.com pink flamingo ink. So remember this is a solid stamp so it's just going to give you one solid impression. So after I ink that up really well, I'm going to remove that stamp and I'm going to take the layering stamp that goes right on top of that, line it up, and then I'll use a darker ink to put that outline right on top. So the ink I'm using now is a darker ink in the same pink family. This is the Mixed Berry Scrapbook.com ink. So it's always best if you start with a lighter color ink for your solid stamp and then a darker ink for the outline. That way you can see it really well. Now I'm just going to take the eyes that are part of that stamp set and I'm going to line the eyes up as well as the mouth and I'm going to ink those up with just some black ink. And here's what I have so far. And as you saw earlier, there is a tree trunk as well as some legs for this tree. And I'm going to color up some legs to put on my Christmas tree. And I'm going to be using the brand new Colorista watercolor markers. These markers are made by Spectrum Noir and they are at a really great price point. Each set is just under $10 a pack and they come in an eight pack. There are two packs available. The one on the left is the Botanic Accents. So there's some deeper colors there. And then the one on the right is the Vibrant Essentials. So more vibrant colors. The markers have a dual tip. So one end is a brush tip, perfect for brush strokes. So that's what this one is. And then on the other side, you have the nib tip, which is perfect for detailed coloring. So it's a much smaller nib. I'm going to be using these markers for coloring all of the images on my cards today. And I'm going to start out with this Christmas trees stamp set. I did stamp out the legs, the purse, the bow, and some of the Christmas ornaments. I stamped them onto some watercolor paper using the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I laid down some of the aquamarine color and this is from the Vibrant Essentials pack. And once I lay that color down, I just take a regular paintbrush. It's a paintbrush that has a thinner tip on it and I just dip it in water and I just blend that ink out. Now, for the skin, Unfortunately, the packs that I have do not have any skin colors in them. So I just went in my stash and grabbed one of the Zig markers. This is the flesh color. And I am just going to add a little bit of that color on the legs and then use my paintbrush just to spread that ink out. One tip that I do have for you when you're using the paintbrush with water is make sure you have a paper towel nearby. And I do, I have it off to the side, which you can't see it there on the camera. But every time I dip my paintbrush in water, I do take the tip of the paintbrush and just blot it on the paper towel so that it's not so saturated because you don't want to have so much water coming over to your cardstock. And also when you go from one color to the next, you want to rinse off the tip of the paintbrush so that you don't mix the colors if that's not what you intended to do. So for example, if you had blue on the tip of the paintbrush and then I go to color the skin, well, if I don't rinse that paintbrush off really well, well, then that skin is gonna end up 
looking blue. So just make sure you're rinsing the tip of the paintbrush between colors and you won't have that issue. So for the purse, I used two colors there. I have the aquamarine, which is the lighter blue in the middle, and then along the edges, I have the peacock blue, and those both are from the same watercolor marker set. It's from the Vibrant Essentials set. And I'm gonna do the same thing with all of the rest of these images. I'm going to have both of these blues, the lighter and the darker on all of these images. And when I get to the other cards and I start coloring up other stamps, you'll see me working with some other colors from both of these sets. But for this particular card, I just wanted to stick with the blues. When I finish coloring these, I will fussy cut them out because there are no coordinating dies for these stamps. I'm also going to be bringing in the Joyful Ride stamp set. It has another Christmas tree on it as well as an old fashioned car and the sentiment Joy which I stamped out with the scrapbook.com postal blue ink and then I just fussy cut it out. So you can see all of my images that are cut out. I'm going to go ahead and attach the legs to the back of the Christmas tree and then I'm going to attach the purse to the right side of the tree. I'm going to tuck the arm under one of the branches and I'm just going to use some double-sided tape on the back just to tape these images to the Christmas tree. I'm going to add the bow to the top of the tree and then I'm going to add the ornaments to the tree. I love how this tree is turning out. I think it's so super cute. I'm going to set that tree aside and I'm going to work on my background. So I have a piece of Nina cardstock cut to four by five and a quarter. I added the cardstock to my sticky grid on my Sizzix stamp and stencil tool and that is sticking to the tool so it's not going to move and then I add the stencil on top. The stencil I'm using is the scrapbook.com Roma Mosaic stencil and that stencil is also sticking to the sticky grid so it's not going to move when I add these pops of color to it. So this is the Roma Mosaic stencil from scrapbook.com and it reminded me of snowflakes and I wanted it to look like I had some glittery snowflakes there in the background so I'm using my scrapbook.com silver glitter pops of color and I'm just squeezing some of them onto that stencil and onto that craft scraper and I'm just putting that all over the stencil. I'm making sure to get into all of the open areas on that stencil. I'm even taking a smaller palette knife just to get some of the areas that I might have missed. And once I have that completely covered in the pops of color, I'll just use the edge of my palette knife just to scrape some of the excess pops of color off. And then I'll remove the stencil and look how beautiful that background is. I will set that aside to dry. And once it's fully dry, I'll go ahead and add my Christmas tree to that card layer. So I'm just going to put some glue on the back of the tree and add it right to the center of that stenciled background. Next, I'm going to add the Sentiment Joy up at the top left hand corner. And I do have to tilt it a little bit just because it's not going to fit if I put it straight. And then I'm going to add that entire layer to an A2 size card base that measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm going to add a few more pops of color to my Christmas tree. The colors that I'm using are the turquoise waters and royal blue. So just add a few more looks like Christmas ornaments to that tree. And then I'll set that aside to dry and that completes this card. For my next card, I'm going to bring back out the Joyful Ride stamp set. I'll be using the Christmas tree. And it also has this bow that you can put around the Christmas tree to make it look like it's secure to the top of the car. So I'll be using that. I'm also going to be using the car and I'm also going to be using this stamp that says may this Christmas be more than just a season but a way of life. So I'm going to start out by stamping my tree. I'm going to stamp the solid in the Twisted Citron Distress Oxide ink. This will be my lightest ink. So that's going to go down first. 
And then I'm going to take out the layering stamp, line it up, and ink that up with a darker green ink, and this one is the Mowed Lawn ink. So I love that two-tone effect of the Christmas tree. I think that's so pretty. Then I'm going to line up the tree bark underneath the tree, and I'm going to ink that up with a brown ink, and this ink I'm using is called Walnut Stain. I will fussy cut that tree out of the cardstock, and then I'll move on to my car, which I stamped out onto some watercolor paper using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and I'm going to use the Colorista watercolor markers to color this up. I added the crimson color all around the edges of that car, and then I'm just taking my water brush with some water on it, and I'm just spreading that ink. I really love the old-fashioned car on this stamp set. I just think that when I see these old-fashioned cars or sometimes there's the old-fashioned pickup trucks, those are my favorite types of Christmas cards. So when I saw this, I knew that I had to have this set. For the window, I'm adding some of the aquamarine. And then for the headlight, I added the yellow. And all of these colors are part of the Vibrant Essentials pack. I'm going to use the scrapbook.com nested square dies and I'm going to cut two of the largest squares out of some white cardstock. So I'm starting here with one of those squares and I put it on my Sizzix stamp and stencil sticky grid to hold that down while I do some ink blending. And I'm going to create a background here. I wanted my background to resemble a sky, so that's why I chose some blues. I have three of the Distress Oxide blue inks. I start with the tumbled glass in the center, which is the lightest blue. Then I come in with the broken china around the edges of that, and then the salty ocean, which will be around the um, outside edges of that card layer. So it goes from dark to light and the lightest being in the center. And then I just take the inks after I already put some inks down and I just blend those out. So I take that lightest color and blend it in with the rest. With that cardstock still on my sticky grid, I'm going to take out this winter flurry stencil from scrapbook.com and I want to add some snowflakes here. So I go ahead and push that stencil down onto that sticky grid and I'm going to use the scrapbook.com white pops of color to add some nice white snowflakes. So just like I did with the previous card, I'm using my scraper and my palette knife just to get in all of those holes of the stencil. And once I have all of those pops of color on there, I'll go ahead and remove that stencil. And then I will have to let this background dry before I add some stamps to it. I'm just going to take my palette knife and scrape off some of the pops of color that got onto my sticky grid and then I'll clean off my palette knife, and then I'm going to take my second square that I die cut out of the square dies, and I'm going to put that white square in the same place on my sticky grid, and I'm ready to stamp out my sentiment. So I'm going to use the stamp that's shaped like a hill, and I'm gonna place it towards the bottom portion of that square, and I'm just gonna pull out my other piece of cardstock that I put the stencil on and where the white is on that stenciled background that's where I want to have my stamp appear on my white cardstock so I was just lining the stamp up with the right place on that stenciled background and once I have it in place I'm going to go ahead and pop that cover right into the hinges on the Sizzix stamp and stencil tool and I'm ready to stamp down this stamp. So I'm just going to close the door on that cover and grab the stamp and then I'm going to ink it up with the scrapbook.com cardinal red ink and I'm going to press that down and get a really good red impression so I am going to just ink it up one more time and stamp that down again. And then I'm going to remove my square from the sticky grid and you can see the sentiment on there. Next I'm going to trim just along the top of that sentiment in the same shape as the sentiment to get a curvy border. And this border is going to be glued down to the bottom of my stenciled background. 
because this is going to represent a snowy border on my card. Now I'm ready to glue the car down on top of that snowy hill. So I'll go ahead and put glue on the back and press that down onto that card panel. I'm going to wait to add the tree because first I want to stamp down that tie with the bow. So I'm just going to place that cardstock layer into my Misty, hold it down with a magnet. I'm just going to place that Christmas tree on top of the car where I want it to go, although I'm not going to glue it down yet. But I am going to hold the Christmas tree down with a magnet so that it does not move. And then I'm going to take a piece of mint tape and mask off the car because I don't want to get ink on the car. What I'm going to do is stamp down that little tie wrap with the bow. So I'm going to place that bow stamp right over the Christmas tree where I want it to be. Once I have it in place, I will close the door on my Misty to grab that stamp and I will ink it up with some black ink and stamp it down onto my Christmas tree. So part of that stamp is going to go on the Christmas tree and part of it's going to go in the sky. And then I'm going to remove that Christmas tree and I'm going to go ahead and glue it down just lining up the string on the tree and the one in the sky. So next I'm going to take a piece of this pattern paper from the Christmas pattern paper pad and I'm going to take a piece of red solid cardstock from the coordinating Christmas solid paper pad and I'm going to also use one of the stamps from the Sentiments for Every Occasion stamp set. I'm going to use the Merry Christmas. So the green pattern paper is four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths and the red cardstock is four and one eighth by four and one eighth. So I just layer all those pieces together and then I'll add that to a white card base that measures five by five inch square. And that's going to complete this card. And here's an up close picture of that card. And I will have pictures of all of these cards on my blog. You can find a link to my coordinating blog post in the description box of this email. Okay, so this next stamp set is called Home for Christmas. It has a Christmas tree, a fireplace. The fireplace has some stockings hanging from it. There's some ornaments. There's also a cat. And there are some stamps there that you can make a present. And again, this is another large six by eight stamp set from scrapbook.com. So I went ahead and stamped out the images that I'm going to be coloring up, which one of them is the fireplace. I have a few ornaments and the cat. And I'm going to color with the Colorista watercolor markers. So with the fireplace, I will be using the Botanic Accents pack, and I'll be using the tan as well as the chestnut colors. So the tan is the darker brown that I'm using right now to color the bricks on the fireplace. So I'm just putting some of that tan color along the edges and then using my paintbrush with the water to spread that color out. And then the chestnut color is for the interior part of the fireplace. So just two different color browns. I will say that if you struggle with coloring, because I know a lot of us do, that watercoloring is probably the easiest way to get started in coloring because you can get a really good blend by just using one marker. And you can see that with the colors that I've laid down. So that chestnut color in the middle of the fireplace is just one color. And I put the darkest color on the edge and used a paintbrush with water to go from dark to light. So the water just spreads that color out. Of course, you can blend colors. So if you had two colors or three colors in a color family, you can blend those together. But getting started, just use one marker. and with that one marker you can get a variety of different color shades in that one color family. So I'm also using some of the reds. I'm using the crimson and that's from the Vibrant Essentials. I'm also using the Bud Green for the stockings. I've used orange and yellow for the fire. So I've used several colors from both of those watercolor packs for this fireplace. So for the cat, I'm using the warm gray and the light gray to color that up. And these are the zig markers. And I went into my stash to get the zig markers because there were no grays in the packs of the Colorista watercolors that I have. 
Now yes, I could have colored the cat brown using one of the markers that I had in the Colorista pack, but I already had the fireplace brown and I thought that would be too much brown if I colored the cat brown as well. So I decided to color the cat gray. I am using three of the ornaments from this set and I'm going to be using the crimson color. This is the red color and just outlining the ornament and then using the water to pull that color towards the middle. I'm also coming in with the peacock blue on this one and then the last ornament is going to have the aquamarine color. Once those are colored up, I will fussy cut them all out. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and stamp out the Christmas tree. So I have a piece of white cardstock that I cut to five and a quarter by four inches. And I am going to use the scrapbook.com pine ink to stamp that down. And I'm going to also be bringing in the scrapbook.com boho smooth cardstock and pattern paper. So these are the papers that I'm using. I cut down the pattern to five and a quarter by one half inch. And I'm gonna put that right along the bottom of that white cardstock. And then the solid, which is the matching color, but just in a solid, it's five and a quarter inches by one quarter inch. And I'm just gonna put that solid strip right along the top of that pattern paper. So I wanted this to look like a living room scene. So I have there what will resemble a floor and I put that in that checkerboard print. And then I have this strip of solid cardstock that I wanted to resemble like a baseboard and it's kind of like a peachy color. Next I'm going to go ahead and glue down the fireplace. So we'll put that to the right of the Christmas tree. It's going to overlap the tree just a little bit as well and I wanted to scoot it over just enough so that I can fit the cat sleeping at the bottom right hand corner of that fireplace. I am going to put a little piece of scrap cardstock on the top of the cat before I adhere it down. And the reason I'm doing this is just to build up some of those cardstock layers on the top because the top of the cat is going to be glued down to the white cardstock, but you can see that there's a difference in height between the white cardstock and the part that's on the fireplace because the fireplace has a thicker cardstock underneath it. That's watercolor paper, which is a little bit thicker, and it's also on top of the um, pattern paper. So you've got a good one two, a good two pieces of cardstock on the left side of that cat than there is on the right side of the cat. So just adding that extra cardstock to the top part of that cat will allow it to sit flat on the card. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up adding these ornaments to my tree. And then I'm going to use the sentiment from the Snow Globe stamp set. This is called Happy Holidays. And I'm going to stamp that out with some of the Cardinal Red Scrapbook.com ink. And there's a perfect spot right above that fireplace for the sentiment. So now I'm ready to finish putting this card together by adhering the fireplace scene to the peach solid color cardstock. And that solid cardstock measures five and a half by four and a quarter inches. And then I'll add that to an A2 size white card base. So my card base also measures five and a half inches by four and a quarter inches. And then I'll finish this up by adding some of the Rudolph red pops of color to the Christmas tree. And that's going to complete this card. For my next card, I will be using the Winter Wishes and Spruce Sprigs stamp set. It has this deer and it has this person holding a bunch of presents. There's some sprigs. I'm just going to be using the deer from this set. So I went ahead and stamped out my deer and I'm going to go ahead and color it up using the Colorista watercolor markers. I'm only using two markers from the Botanic Accents pack. I'm using the tan and the chestnut. So right now you see me with the tan. I put it along the edges of the body of the deer and I'm just taking my paintbrush with some water and just spreading that color out to make it look like it has some shading. I do go back in and add some more color to the same spots because I want it to have a little bit more darker brown 
and I want to spread that color a little bit more down into the body. So after you've added your color and you added your water, if you want to add more color, you can always go back in and do that. So for the ears and for the face, I'm using the chestnut and I'm going to go ahead and color those up. And these are the same two colors that I used in the fireplace on the previous card. For the antlers, I do go in and use the tan, the same that I used for the body. Next, I'm going to go ahead and stamp out some Christmas trees. The Christmas trees I'm using are from the Christmas tree stamp set as well as the Joyful Ride stamp set. So I have one Christmas tree already in position. I have a piece of scrap paper down in my Misty and I'm inking the stamp up with the pine ink from scrapbook.com. I'm stamping it down on the scrap paper and then I'm putting in a piece of cardstock. My cardstock measures five and a half by four and a quarter. And then without re-inking that stamp, I'm going to press down on my cardstock to get a second generation stamp. I'm going to repeat that process with the next Christmas tree. So I lined up the Christmas tree on the cardstock that I want it to eventually be on. And then I remove that cardstock from the Misty, ink up the stamp, with the pine ink and stamp it down onto the scrap cardstock. Then I put back in my cardstock panel into my Misty and press down the door on my Misty one more time to get the second generation stamp. I repeat that process a third time with the last Christmas tree. So I'm taking the stamp, lining it up on the cardstock. Once I have it lined up, I will close the door on the Misty to grab that stamped image, remove the cardstock, ink up the stamp with the pine ink, press that down onto the scrap cardstock. Once I get all of that dark ink onto the scrap cardstock, I'll go ahead and put my cardstock panel back in the Misty, and I will close the door again without re-inking that stamp and get that second generation stamped image. So my goal here is to get a lighter impression using one ink color because now I'm going to come back in with the layers and I'm going to use the same ink with a first generation stamp. So I'm inking it up once and pressing it down onto the cardstock and now I have that darker color ink on top. So this is how you can use one ink pad and get multiple colors from that one ink pad. So now I'm just going to repeat the process with the other two Christmas trees and I'm just going to line up the layered stamp and then ink it up with the pine ink and press it down. So I'm just going to ink it up once, press it down onto the cardstock to get that darker impression and then you can see the lighter um, green in the background. Okay, now I'm going to come in with the tree barks and I'm going to line up the tree bark on the bottom of all of those trees and I'm going to stamp those out in the scrapbook.com gingerbread ink. So this is a brown ink, so I'll do it for all three. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue my deer right between the opening there in the Christmas trees. I'm going to use a Merry Christmas sentiment from the Sentiments for Every Occasion stamp set and I'll stamp that down with the Cardinal Red ink. I want to layer this on some pattern paper so I'm going to use the Peppermint Pattern Paper Pad from scrapbook.com. I'm going to use this red pattern and I'm going to cut that down to five and a half by four and a quarter and layer my white card layer on top and then I'll put this on an A2 size card base. And then to add some color to those Christmas trees, I'm going to add the pops of color in Rudolph Red and Glitter Gold. I'm just going to squeeze a little drop of these on all of my trees to make it look like Christmas ornaments. And once I have all of the pops of color on the trees, I will let this lay flat to dry. You want to make sure that you let it lay flat because this is a wet medium. And if you start handling it and get something on it while it's still wet, it will smudge on your card front. So that's going to complete this card. Moving on to my next card, I'm going to be using the Snow Globe stamp set. This stamp set has a snow globe and there are some houses that you can put inside. There's also some little Christmas trees and snowflakes. So I'm going to be doing some heat embossing with some embossing powder. And when I do that, I like to add some powder to my cardstock. 
And the reason I add the powder is so that I don't have embossing powder stick where there's no ink. So I use my Pink and Main anti-static brush to add the powder. And then I'm going to ink up my snow globe stamp with some Versamark ink and then press that down really well on my cardstock. Next, I'm going to sprinkle on some Brutus Monroe Gilded Embossing Powder. This is a gold embossing powder. I thought it would be really pretty to have a gold snow globe. You can always stamp this out in a different color ink. So if you didn't want to have a black ink, just pick a different color ink. You can possibly even use a gold ink if you don't, want to, if you don't like to use embossing powder. So I'm just going to go ahead and heat set my embossing powder onto my cardstock. And once I heat set it, it's going to melt that embossing powder and it's going to look so shiny. Look at that pretty gold. I love that. Next, I'm going to take some of the Distress Oxide Spun Sugar ink, it's a light pink ink, and just add some pink to the center of the snow globe. I'm going to do some embossing on the center of the snow globe, so I want to make sure that that ink is completely dry before I do some embossing, so I'm just running some heat over top of that pink ink to make sure it's completely dry, and then I'm going to use this stamp, which is a bunch of little snowflakes and I'm going to stamp it down several times with some Versamark ink. So again, I did add the um, powder to the center, and then I'll go ahead and stamp down all of these little snowflakes all around or all inside of the snow globe. I'm going to add some of the Brutus Monroe Alabaster embossing powder, and then I will heat set that. So now I have all of these shiny white snowflakes inside of the snow globe. Next I'm going to stamp out the houses. There are two different style houses. I'm going to stamp three houses from those two stamps. So I'm going to stamp out two of the large and then one of the more narrow ones. And then there's also the roofs. They're all separate stamps, which will make it easier to ink them up in different colors. So I'm going to be using the Pink Flamingo and the Oasis inks from scrapbook.com. And since this is a brand new stamp and I haven't used it before, I did not get a very good impression. So I'm just going to prep the surface by just adding some Versamark ink to it. And then once the Versamark is on that stamp, I'll just add the colored ink again and then stamp it down. And that will give me a much better impression. Next, I'm going to line up the door to one of the houses there. I'm going to ink that up with some of the pink flamingo ink and stamp that down. And then I'm going to add the chimneys to the roof. So I'll line those up and I'll ink those down with the scrapbook.com gingerbread ink. And this stamp set also has a stamp to add like a snowy, um, maybe icicles to the roof line. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some white embossing with that stamp set. So you saw me put some powder down first, and now I'm just lining those stamped images up. You can put them on the roof or you can put them on the top of the house. So I'll just go ahead and ink those up with some of the Versamark ink. Once they're inked up, I will use some of that alabaster which is the white embossing powder to sprinkle on to those areas. And then I'm going to go ahead and heat set that. And you can see that my stamp wasn't aligned all the way at the top of that house, but that's okay because I'll have the roof covering the part that does not have the embossing powder at the top of that house. All right, so now I'm just coming in with some of the Oasis ink and just putting some color at the bottom of the snow globe. And now I'm ready to add all of my houses to that snow globe. So I'm just positioning them where I want them and then I will glue them all down. Once I have them glued down, I will fussy cut the snow globe from the cardstock. You can see that I have an open space below the houses and I wanted to put a sentiment in here and I wanted to say winter wishes, but this sentiment obviously is not going to fit on two lines. So I'm going to bend the stamp and it will allow me to get my scissors in there to cut it so that I have two separate words that I can stamp out. 
And there's nothing wrong with cutting your stamps. It's not going to hurt them in any way. So I want to create a snowy border at the bottom of the houses. So I have this piece of white cardstock that I'm cutting a snowy border out of. So it just has a little curve to it. And then I'm going to take my snow globe stamp and I'm going to stamp over top of this snowy border with the top part of the snow globe. So where the circle part of the snow globe is. I'm just going to ink up that portion with some black ink. And once I have that black stamped onto it, and it doesn't need to be perfect, I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to trim the curve there just to get that black part out. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to make sure that this piece of snow is the same exact size as the inside of the snow globe. So once I have that trimmed out, now I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment onto this. So I'll just line up winter wishes and I'm going to stamp that out with some gray ink. And I do stamp each word out individually. So once I have the word winter stamped, I go back in and line up the word wishes. And now I can glue that right onto my snow globe. And look how that snowy border fits perfectly inside of that snow globe. For the layers of my card, I'm going to be bringing in the peppermint paper pad. I have two colors here that I'm going to use. I'm also bringing in the scrapbook.com square dies. I'm also going to be bringing in some gold mirror cardstock to complement the gold in the snow globe. So I'll die cut all of those cardstock layers. And then I'm going to take this pink one and I'm going to make a background of snowflakes. So here I'm going to just put some scrap paper underneath because some of my snowflakes are going to go off of the cardstock. And I'm going to use several different color blue inks to stamp out various snowflakes onto my background. So the snowflake stamp is from the snow globe stamp set and I'm using the small snowflake, there's medium and a larger snowflake and just stamping out in various colors using a light, medium, and a dark ink in the same color family. So the gold mirror cardstock is going to be layered onto that teal cardstock and then the pink with the snowflakes will be on top of the gold cardstock. So the dies that I use with this, they're the three largest square nesting dies from scrapbook.com. I add the snow globe to the top center and now I'm ready to do my card base. And I want my card to be a square card. So I take a piece of eight and a half by 11 white cardstock. I fold it in half and I take the largest square die from the nesting dies. I place the die slightly over the edge of the fold in the cardstock. And then I run that through my die cut machine and that will give me a square card base. Now if I flip this over, you'll see that some of that teal cardstock will show on the back. And if you want a more clean look so that everything is white on the back, just die cut another piece of white cardstock from the same size square die, add it to the back of your card layer, and then add that entire layer to the card base. And now when I turn this around, you'll be able to see that I have a much cleaner look. Everything is white on the back. That will complete my snow globe card. And here's one more look at all the cards I created today with the scrapbook.com new Christmas stamps and dies and stencils. I would love for you to leave me a comment down below and let me know which one was your favorite. Remember, all supplies will be linked in the description box below as well as on my blog at lisamearsdesigns.com. As always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to click that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so that you'll be notified of all of my new videos. Thanks for watching everyone and have a great day. Bye-bye.